Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing amazing. Welcome back to Thrive with Stride. I hope you guys are doing great. So, it's been a few days since I've talked to you, and guys, there has been so much news. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So, the first thing um, we're going to talk about here is, um, it, it, it says here, and I'm reading from Toronto Star, it's been a big week for Royal Health News. Monday, it was announced that Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, was diagnosed with malignant skin cancer. Doctors discovered the malignant, sorry, the melanoma while the Duchess was in surgery for breast cancer treatment. So, wow. So she had two different kinds of cancers, guys. She has two different kinds of cancers going on right now. And I, you know, let's hope that everything is good with Fergie. Fergie is a little bit of a... Um, you know, she has her issues. <laughs> Fergie uh, is a bit of a mess, but you know what? Um, she, I believe she has a good heart. I believe that her heart is in the good, the right place because she's had problems with the royal family. She's left the royal family. She's come back. So, you know, like, and she has, she seems to be, um, sympathetic towards Harry and Meghan. So I, you know, let's hope that she is fine. Let's hope that she's fine. So yeah, but she she was in she was getting um, breast cancer treatment, and then they discovered that she had malignant skin cancer as well. So and she's very light skinned. She's a very fair lady. So yeah, she, you know they need to take care of their skin. Everybody needs to take care of their skin. But people with really fair skin, they need to slather on that that SPF and take care of your skin. Uh, yeah, so you know what? That's Fergie. Fergie has a couple things going on right now. And of course, we know um, King Charles III. Uh, he, this week, he's supposed to be getting his prostate looked at. And, you know, they're kind of putting it in a way to say, well, hey, men need to do that. Because it is true. Men do need to take care of themselves. Men do not like to go to the doctor a lot. If you have a husband, if you're listening to me, you have a husband or a boyfriend or a son or men in your family, and most of us do have men in our family, always check upon them and say, oh, so when last did you go and get your medical? At least once a year, you're supposed to go to the doctor, go, go for medical. So yeah, men generally do not like going to the doctor. So if you have anybody in your life that you love, any men in your life that you love, as women, we actually have to like give them the nudge, the push, because they, they don't think about it <laughs> most of the time. Not all men, but most men, yeah, they're a little scared. They don't, you know, they're busy taking, looking after the family, busy looking after other people. And, you know, men, usually a woman will be busy looking after other people, but she will also take time and she will know, okay, uh, I don't feel I don't feel well this way or maybe my foot's hurting or my knee's hurting or something is hurting and she will go to the doctor. Men, they usually try to, you know, not to go to the doctor. But anyways, guys, so it is good. You know, it, it, it has brought the the subject of prostate prostate cancer, to, you know, in men to to the forefront. So I, I mean, th I guess that's good. That's good. Um, but another thing that happened as well here, um, so Angela Levathan was on, um, I think it's GB News or, she's always on GB News, <laughs> but Angela Levathan was on GB News, um, I don't know, I didn't watch this clip, I did not want to see Angela Levathan because she, she gets on my nerves sometimes, guys, <laughs> because she's so, like, <sighs> The lady, the woman is never moderate when it comes to Megan. She's very hateful when it comes to Megan. And it's like, sometimes the things that she says is almost like she is hurting. Like if somebody did something to hurt her, like if Megan did something to hurt her. I can guarantee you, Angela, any time that Megan was to ever see you in person or, and I hope that never happens, but she could care less about you. She probably wouldn't even know who you are. So... <laughs> You know, he, he, she acts like if Meghan or Harry did her something wrong and it seems like if it hurts her, like, you know, and she's so petty and 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 uh, and, and she's not even keeled. 
I can understand somebody criticizing, right? But when you go deep and when you go to the depths where you feel like if you want to hurt the person or if you want to jab, jab, jab at the person every chance you get, there's something wrong with that. So I don't like the way she covers um, Meghan and Harry. Um, and there's a lot of them who, uh, another one who um, gets on my nerves when she talks about Meghan is that Kinsey Schofield, or I think that's her name, I don't know. <laughs> but either way, that, that woman, she, she looks a little crazy sometimes, her eyes are always, <laughs> you know what, I should never say that. I apologize, she looks a little nuts sometimes, let's put it that way. Her eyes are always staring... <laughs> guys i apologize <laughs> you know what i'll take it all back i take it all back and i'm talking about kinsey schofield i think that's her name she acts like if megan came and stole her man when she took harry <laughs> so i don't know it's just an, it's just I, when these people talk about megan it's like they have no tact they have no um what is the word they just they just go for it like have Megan did them something wrong, so they can't be even keeled when it comes to Megan. They're always at, from zero to a hundred, and 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 they're always layering on the hate when it comes to Megan. So so you know so these kind of people I don't really watch them anymore. When I have to talk about them, I'll just read whatever others write wrote about what they said, and that's that. But either way. Angela Leviathan was on, I think it was GB News, because it's all she ever goes on. And she said something that has people talking. Okay? So, so basically, she kind of compared what Princess Diana went through when um, she said Williams was, was around 15. And when Princess Diana was going through some stuff, um, you know, he would have to put tissues under under the um the door so that she can um you know take care of herself she would be crying or whatever she'd lock herself in the in the room or whatever and just be crying and stuff and th i said this a couple days ago the fact that the princess of wales both princess of wales have gone through it seems like half to me in my opinion Kate has gone through, and this is also alluding, alluding to what um, Angela Levatton said. It seems like if she is going through or went through some sort of mental health breakdown, and that's and, and this is all. Um, I'm just saying this in uh, speculation. That I don't know for sure, but it seems like if this is something that would make more sense than an abdominal surgery <clears throat> that um because normally when somebody has any kind of abdominal surgery and i've listened to other people talk about this and most people are saying hey this is something a couple days and you're out they don't like to keep you in the hospital for physical stuff that long but if you are going through a mental breakdown or something you can bet you're behind. You will have a longer stay. So it would make more sense that Kate was going through some sort of mental breakdown. So guys, remember last year, the end of the year, there was all these um, headlines about somebody in the royal family is going to be, um, some couple is going to break up in the royal family. And people were speculating. And of course, Kate and Wills came up. But what if, what if, guys, this was actually true and it was actually, because we know we've heard all these rumors going on for years about Willie um, pruning rose bushes, doing all kind of stuff <laughs> and not being faithful and all that rumors that we heard. I mean, they even went to the point of making it so that nobody in the uk can talk about it you know on the news but of course us on the internet we can talk about it <laughs> we can talk about it because you know but so that has been a rumor it's been going on forever right what if it was them and they were gonna be getting separated or something 
And it was to the fact that she just couldn't deal with it. Maybe she just couldn't deal with it. Nobody is that strong. I mean, this girl, she's known William from the time she was, what, 16 or 17? I don't know how old they were. But either way, she, her mom, made sure that she went into the same school that William was going to. Just so she might, you know, she'd have a chance. Hey, now listen, if I had a daughter and she could go to school with a prince, I think I would, I would probably make sure she goes to the, and they were in the same age, I'd, I'd make sure she's in the same school as well. <laughs> if, I, if I was in that kind of, um, those kind of circles or whatever, if I was in that, I probably might do the same thing for my daughter. Give her a chance to meet the prince, you never know. <laughs> but either way, her mom made sure that she went to that school the same school as William. They even, I think she even stayed back a year and all that from going to some other school and she made sure she got into that school. And, you know, and, and I can't fault, you know what? I, I can't even fault um, Kate Middleton's mother, that Carol Middleton woman. I can't fault her for trying to do the best for her daughter or for her daughters and her children. I, I get it. But either way, she has known William from, from the time she was a teenager. And she has been, she has been pursuing William all this time. All this time she has been, she had been pursuing William. So she finally got William. And after 10 long years of will they, won't they, will he, won't, won't he, all this stuff, he finally proposed because apparently she was the only one that was around still. Maybe he had a lot of girlfriends that we didn't know about. And she's the only one that really wanted it. So she stuck around. But then in the end, don't you think it would really, really, it would really, really probably hurt her if she, if she, you know, first she finds out that he cheats. He's been pegging all over the place. <laughs> yeah, she found out that he's uh, doing other stuff. And then he decides, you know what? Uh, and then he, then, you know what, ha what else happens? She used to lean on Harry a whole lot. Kate used to lean on Harry a whole lot. And now Harry's gone because she, you know, she was probably jealous of Meghan. Jealous that Meghan can have a, you know, she can speak a whole, uh, she can speak properly. Um, she can, you know, she doesn't need notes. Meghan speaks on the fly. Meghan does a good job when it comes to, you know, speaking in, in public, public speaking. And Kate struggles with that. There's a lot of things. Megan, Megan looks uh, like 10, 15, 20 years younger than, than, than Kate. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why she would be jealous of Megan. And then she also has, um, she got um, Harry. And I believe also that Kate had a little crush on Harry. I believe it. I totally believe she had a crush on Harry. She liked the fact that she had both of them. She, you know, she loved the fact that she was the only girl. Between the two brothers, I think that's what she loved that so much. She had um, William and then she had Harry as, you know, her, you know, flirt with your little brother, your brother-in-law. I think that's the situation. And when Megan came along and Megan is like very assertive and beautiful and smart and intelligent and all the good things and could speak properly. That's another thing. She wasn't mumbling. <laughs> I think she, that really, really set her off. And then... Fast forward, Harry's gone, and she's there now, and she realizes that she's still not getting the things that she actually wanted in life. And and now, Willie is probably, and, and we saw for the last year or two, guys, we saw the footage of them, how they behave around each other. We saw the footage. I mean, so many times she's swatted his hand away. He has ignored her, walked in front of her, walked along, not, not paying attention to her. I mean, even Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise had to, like, help her up the stairs or help her, you know, all these things. And William just ignored her. I mean, we can see with our own two eyes, guys, that something was going on in that marriage. What if William took it by the horns and said, you know what? I am not happy. Um, I want to 
get out of this marriage. And she just didn't take it well. That's what I'm beginning to believe. Because guys, anything that those people, those courtiers or whoever speaks for the royal family, anything that they tell you, it ain't the truth. I don't believe anything that they have to say. Because you know why? Because I read Spear and Harry told us everything. There were so many times that, you know, that he said in, the, in that book where they just flat out lied. I mean, when Harry, when, when William was getting married, Harry was not his, his, um, his best man. Harry was not his official best man. He had other be- another best man or two, I think two best men. And then Harry, I guess. But they put it out that Harry was the best man. Right? That was a bold-faced lie. And of course, um, and all these things. Like, they, they do a lot. They tell a lot of lies. That's the long and short of the story. So, anything that the courtiers, anybody who's working at the palace, are speaking for the royal family, I don't believe anything they have to say. So, I'm just going to draw my own conclusions. I believe that things were going bad and we all saw it in that marriage. William probably said, hey, I don't want to live a lie anymore. I want to find somebody that I really love. He, he's looking at Harry and Meghan and saying, you know what? I want that. That's what I want because Harry and Meghan actually love each other. So, I mean, William is like, you know what? I'm miserable. I want to find somebody that I actually love. And and you know what? Funny thing about it is I believe, I believe at first he did love her. I believe they loved each other at first. But sometimes you grow apart. That happens in relationships and it's normal. People in the royal family have had divorces before, guys. It's normal. It's happened before. You have to follow your heart. You can't live a lie. So so you know what? I actually kind of, um, I applaud William if that's what he did. But I believe she didn't take it well because she had already had it in her head that she was going to be the queen of England. And and she just did not take that news well that she was not going to be. That's what I believe happened, guys. You could let me know if I went a little too far. But that's what I believe happened. And she had a breakdown. And I find it funny that people are talking about oh her privacy and her privacy princess diana is not here to defend herself everybody talks about princess diana's problems that she had everybody talks about her bulimia her her um her anorexia they talk about all the things that she went through her mental health issues everything they talk about it and they don't care they talk about it why why is it so bad to talk about kate middleton It would actually be a good thing to talk about it and get it out there so that people know that even people that are in Kate Middleton's position go through mental health issues. It would it would actually humanize her to people. It would humanize her. That's what I think. So either way, guys. So, yeah. So Angela Levatton kind of said, um, I think. This is what she said. He said, she said, I think he goes back to his own mother when he became what she called the man of the house. She explained, William had to deal with her mental illnesses, crying and screaming, and he put tissues when she locked herself in. That's what Le- that's what that's what Leviathan said. And I think he took on this responsibility at the age of 15 when he didn't know where well, he didn't quite know what to do and then Leviathan went on but here he's a mature man and he knows the priority is to look after his wife who has been so wonderfully supportive of him that he has decided that this is the thing that he is going to do family first well it should be family first why is that any why should that be a mystery it should be family first all the time that's why Harry left to take care of his family first. His Harry's priority right now is to take care of his wife and his kids. Those are his first priority. And then after that, then he can, you know, they can say anything else after that. He can talk about his dad or whatever. And they and they did put in the news today that um Harry and Meghan did reach out to um you know, to the to, to that man that y'all call a king and Kate 
and they and like I said before, I said this a couple days ago. I'm pretty sure that Megan, no matter what, Megan reached out. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she reached out. She probably sent them flowers. She probably sent them a card. Those kind of things. I totally believe that that happened. But yeah, so it's not a surprise to me that um they that she reached out and Harry reached out to to them. That's not a surprise to me. And another thing as well, guys, that's a little weird is apparently Willie, Willie only visited Kate once in all this time. Apparently he did not go because he probably is, is causing her distress by just being there because he is probably not going to be um, somebody who is going to bring her comfort. So, you know, she probably just can't deal with it. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section or in the chat. Do you think that this is caused by the fact that William wanted to end this relationship? That's what I believe. And this is all speculation on my part. This is just my opinion, of course. But that's what I think. Because it doesn't make sense to me that she's in the hospital for this long. For something that supposedly was... a. Uh, something that she had planned uh, it doesn't sound right to me and I'm using my common sense and I'm not listening to what whatever they put out because whatever they put out is pure lies in my opinion but anyways guys that's just my opinion here and guys please remember to like subscribe and share and I will talk to you in the next one if you want to send a super chat or super stickers you can do that if you want to join my channel um you can do it so on Patreon or buy me a coffee. I would appreciate it so much, guys. Anyways, guys, I will talk to you in the next one. Have a great one, guys. Bye.